Russian tank got into trouble. And this one is trapped too. Boom. Another one. For this missile, no barriers exist. It always reaches its target. It's no coincidence the missile is called Javelin. This weapon has demoralized Russian generals and caught Russian tank crews off guard. Let's see how Ukrainians have used the Javelin ATGM in the war against Russia. A soldier uses the Javelin to strike a Russian armored personnel carrier. The missile soars into the sky before sharply targeting the vehicle. This attack mode is called Top Attack, allowing it to strike any armored target. Here's the missile being used in direct attack mode. This mode is chosen when the target is in an open area without obstacles. Or this armored personnel carrier abandoned by Russians after a failed assault. The missile hits it squarely in the front. This is what happens after Javelin strikes. Russian tanks fear it more than anything. Now I'm going to show you something interesting. In this case, the Russians thought their tank was securely hidden, but the Javelin can attack targets behind obstacles. The key is to guide the missile and choose the correct mode. The Russian tank is doomed. Here's another example. This tank is partially shielded by trees, or what's left of them. But for the Javelin, it's no problem. It attacks from above. This Russian tank was destroyed at fairly close range. Ukrainians took up an advantageous position, waited for the armor to approach, and struck. The missile only needs 50 meters to activate and hit its target. This trap was a shocking experience for the Russians. A group of eight armored vehicles moved out for an assault. Ukrainians targeted the first tank. The crew had no idea it would vanish in moments. Another shot. Target destroyed. The enemy starts to panic and makes more mistakes. The tank is hit. These tankers didn't make the right choice, but they tried. A javelin missile hits the tank, but it keeps moving and retreats into the forest belt. A massive explosion sends the turret of the Russian tank flying tens of meters into the air. Excellent ambush, Ukrainians. Do you remember this video? This marked the victorious path of the Javelin ATGM. Over several years of war in Ukraine, Russians have failed to reduce the effectiveness of this system. They tried various methods, mainly welding cages onto tank turrets, which backfired. These didn't stop the missiles. That's why in Ukraine, these setups are called barbecue grills. No explanation is needed for why. The Javelin isn't just for anti-tank defense, it can also target other objectives. For example, there are confirmed cases of Russian helicopters being destroyed. Here's how a BM-21 Grad was hit. Ukrainian troops approached it closely and guided the missile. Russian MLRS lack any armor, so the Javelin easily destroyed the target. Or take this anti-aircraft system on a vehicle chassis. Ukrainians waited for the Russians to prepare it for use and struck. The vehicle, loaded with ammunition, was obliterated. The Javelin system can also target low-flying, slow-moving attack helicopters. A Ukrainian soldier aimed and launched a Javelin missile. The system can strike targets up to 4,750 meters away. A flash and black smoke. The helicopter is hit. Or this video. A Russian helicopter flew at extremely low altitudes to avoid Ukrainian air defense systems. This tactic works against traditional air defenses, but not against the Javelin. A clean hit. The cost of one such helicopter starts at $15 million, while the Javelin missile costs $150,000. This Russian helicopter was flying in a pair. The missile struck the tail of the second helicopter, disabling it. It had only seconds before it crashed to the ground. Even if the helicopter flies at an altitude above 4,000 meters, the Javelin can still hit it. The maximum flight altitude of the missile 
is 4,200 meters. Friends who fight on the front lines shared instances where the enemy tried to jam javelin missiles using electronic warfare. It didn't work. The American system is so ingeniously designed that it has protection against electronic interference. What can Russians counter this system with? And do Ukrainians have anything comparable in effectiveness? The Russian counterpart to the Javelin is the Cornet ATGM, but it falls short in nearly all parameters. It weighs three times as much, lacks an automatic guidance system. The operator must continuously illuminate the target with a laser during the missile's flight. Its minimum range is twice that of the Javelin, while the Cornet boasts slightly longer range and claims to penetrate 1,200 millimeters of armor, 400 millimeters more than the Javelin. These advantages are hard to utilize. The Javelin is a fire and forget system. The missile independently reaches the target, while Russian operators must remain exposed, laser illuminating the target. This reduces efficiency and puts soldiers at risk. However, the Cornet is highly versatile available in many modifications, and mounted on various platforms. Its numerical advantage allows Russians to achieve some results. Interestingly, Ukrainians have captured many cornets as trophies. There are dozens of videos of successful strikes against Russian forces using these systems. Here's a Russian tank in the cornet's sights. A flash marks the hit. Another tank this time a T-90M Pro Rev, was struck by a cornet. Ukrainians later finished off the tank with a drone. In this video, Ukrainians observe the cornet missile's trajectory through the Stugna's screen. The tank is destroyed. Here's an impressive example. A coordinated attack using both javelin and cornet systems on a Russian tank. The javelin strikes from above, while the cornet hits the front. An intriguing scenario that left the tank no chance. And this video is from the realm of fantasy. The Ukrainians identified an enemy squad armed with Cornet PTRKs and fired Stugna at them. The Ukrainian counterpart is the Stugna PATGM. Functionally similar to the Cornet, it matches it in efficiency and parameters. The Stugna allowed Ukrainians to compensate for the insufficient number of javelins at the front. There are dozens of videos showing Russian tanks and other armored vehicles destroyed by this system. Here's how it works in practice. Ukrainians launch a missile and guide it to the target using a laser if the target is immobilized. There's no problem. This Russian tank tried to fire on Ukrainian positions from the forest belt. It failed. The Stugna crew spotted and destroyed it in time. The system's high armor-piercing capability often causes ammunition detonation. Just like in this case, the vehicle was blown to pieces. Let's see how the anti-tankers from Omega Division stopped the Russian soldiers. Two tanks and three BMPs move toward a combat mission, unaware they're already in a trap. A missile is launched at a tank. Watch how clearly it can be seen. The tank is hit. The second missile targets a BMP following the tank. Boom! It stops in the same spot where the tank was destroyed moments ago. The Russians didn't realize they shouldn't proceed and sent another armored personnel carrier. The Stugna is reloaded and ready. A hit. The assault is thwarted. Here's a rare and unique case. A Russian helicopter arrived to drop off troops and hovered mid-air. Ukrainians used the Stugna and fired a missile. A precise hit. The Russian helicopter was destroyed. Another video shows a skilled operator aiming a missile and shooting down a helicopter. Excellent work. If you're interested in more on these ATGMs, I can make a dedicated video. Just let me know in the comments. Both systems share one significant drawback. Their weight. With a launcher, they weigh over 70 kilograms. 
while the javelin is only 22 kilograms. Yes, you won't run with it, but one person can carry and use it. Cornet and Stugna, however, require time to set up on a tripod, connect all components, and so on. The FGM-148 Javelin is considered one of the best ATGMS capable of destroying any tank in the world. It can see through protective screens, distinguish infrared flares from the target, hit tanks with reactive armor, and as we've seen, even shoot down helicopters. Its autonomous guidance allows the operator to leave the position or prepare for the next shot immediately after launch. Unlike the Russian or Ukrainian systems, destroying the crew during the missile's flight does not affect its chances of hitting the target. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next episodes.